we're going to look at extending what we've been learning over the last couple of, the day, of days. Uh, and we're going to talk about the rational zero theorem. So on Friday, we looked at if we know one of the zeros, we can use synthetic substitution to find the rest of them by dividing and then factoring. What if we don't know any of these zeros? Well, our rational zero theorem or rational root theorem tells us that if we have a polynomial in standard form and the leading coefficient is a n and the constant is a naught or a zero, remember that the leading coefficient is the term in front of the, uh, the term with the highest exponent, the number in front. So in this case, the leading coefficient is 3 and the constant is 4. In this case, the leading coefficient is 6, and the constant is negative 15. So this t um, theorem tells us that the polynomial will have integer coefficients, um, or if it has integer coefficients, it doesn't work if these are fractions, then every rational zero is in the form of p over q. So when we say list your p's over q's, we're talking about t listing all of the possible zeros. p is defined as all of the factors of the constant a0, and q is defined as all the factors of the leading coefficient a n. So let's look at our first example and list the, um, the factors of our constant. So p is our factors of our constant 4. So our factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. And then q are our factors of our leading coefficient. Uh, factors of 3 are 1 and 3. So then we can make combinations of these, and it'll give us our rational, our possible rational zeros. So we have plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, plus or minus 4 over 1. And all I did here was take my 1 each of these p's and divide them by this q. And then next I'm going to take each of these p's and divide them by this q. And then I'll simplify my fractions. So then my second set is 1 over 3, plus or minus, plus or minus 2 over 3, and plus or minus 4 over 3. So really, these ones are just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and then the other options are plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds, and plus or minus 4 thirds. So let's look at another example. There's a lot more possibilities here, and when we reduce the fractions, we get different um, sets. So we'll list our p's. It's all the factors of 15. So 15 is 1 and 15, and 3 and 5. So the factors for p for um, the constant p, p are 1, 3, 5, and 15. And then the factors of our leading coefficient, 6, that's q, is 1, 2, 3, and 6, because 6 is 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. And now I have to list all my possible combinations here. Now, I'm not going to write the first set as a fraction over 1, so it's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15. Then my next set is plus or minus 1 over, oops, plus or minus, let's try that again, uh, plus or minus 1 over 2, plus or minus 3 over 2, plus or minus 5 over 2, and plus or minus 15 over 2. Okay, so that was taking each of these and dividing it by the 2. Now I'm going to take each of them and divide it by the 3. And that's plus or minus 1 over 3, plus or minus 3 over 3, which, which equals 1. So I don't need to write that again, really. Plus or minus 5 over 3, <coughs> and plus or minus 15 over 3, which equals 5. So here we have a case where two of these I don't need to list again because I've already listed them in the top. And then my last set is plus or minus 1 over 6, plus or minus 3 over 6, which is reduces to 1 half. So that's already listed. And then I have plus or minus 5 over 6, 
<clears throat> and then plus or minus 15 over 6, which reduces to 5 over 2, because they're both divisible by 3, and so that also I don't need to use. So right now, those are the lists of all the possible zeros for each of these polynomials. Then, <coughs> if I want to check to see which ones work, we can use what we've learned about synthetic substitution, and when I get a, fact, um, a remainder of zero, then it's actually one of the zeros. But, in some cases, this is a lot to check. So we can narrow it down a little bit by looking at the Descartes rule of signs. The Descartes rule of signs helps us narrow down our possible zeros so we don't have to check as many in some cases. So the number of possible positive zeros is equal to the number of sign changes in f of x, the original function, and then it decreases by 2. So because our complex roots always come in pairs, it redu reduces by 2. So if there's four sign changes, there's either 4, 2, or 0 positive zeros. If there was three sign changes, it would be 3, 1, or 0 positive zeros. So let's look at, um, and then the number of negative zeros is equal to the number of sign changes in f of negative x. So when I substitute negative x into my function and then look at the sign changes, um, that tells me how many possible negative zeros there are, and that decreases by 2. And this is helpful because if we find out that there are zero negative zeros, then we don't have to check the negative ones. Or if we find out that there's zero positive zeros, we know that the positive ones won't work. So that's why we want to look at this. So if I look at my original polynomial here, this one, I get, I see that it changes once from positive to negative and twice from negative to positive. So this is two sign changes. So there's two or zero possible positive zeros. Now to find <coughs> f of negative x, I need to actually substitute negative x into the equation. Negative x cubed plus 4. So this stays as positive 3 Negative x to the fourth is positive x to the fourth. And negative x cubed is negative x cubed, so that negative negative becomes plus x cubed and plus 4. So here's where we see there are zero sign changes in f of negative x, so there are zero possible negative zeros. So we don't have to check any of the negatives on our list, which reduces it by quite a bit. <coughs> so looking at the second one, sorry, I took it off the screen here. Let's look at the positive sign changes. You go, um, there's positive zeros based on f of x. So it goes positive to negative, that's one. Negative to positive, that's two. Positive to negative, that's three. So there's three or one possible zero positive zero now we will need to find what f of negative x is so that's six times negative x to the fifth minus eight times negative x to the fourth plus 20 times negative x squared minus the 15. This is six, negative 6x to the fifth because a negative to the odd power is negative. This is going to stay as negative 8x to the fourth because the negative to an even power is positive, so that doesn't change signs. And then a negative to an even power again on the x squared. Negative x squared is positive, so that stays as positive. 20 minus 15. And we'll look at our sign changes. Didn't change signs. Negative to negative. Negative to positive is 1. Positive to negative is 2. So we have two possible 
negative zeros or zero possible negative zeros. <clears throat> so in this case, it doesn't help us that much. But if we are checking and we find that we get three possible zeros, positive zeros, we know we're done checking the positive ones. That's the, one of the ways it can help us there. Okay, so then the last is finding them all. This should actually be part C. We're going to put it all together and then use our synthetic substitution to check for zeros. So we're going to list our possible zeros. x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 19x squared plus 11x plus 30. So my p's are factors of 30. And in this case, my q's are factors of 1, which is just 1. So it's nice. We only have the whole numbers to look at. So my p's are 1. Let's see, 1 in 30, 2 in 15, 3 in 10, 5 and 6. So there's quite a few, even though they're always whole numbers. My Q is equal to 1. So my possible P over Qs are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 15, and plus or minus 30. And you might say, do we have to write all the pluses and minuses? Don't be lazy. Just write it down. And that way you remember that both are options. So now we can look at the rule of signs. If I look at the original problem, I have positive to positive, positive to negative, that's one. Negative to positive, that's two. Positive to positive, <coughs> that's not a change. So there was 2 or 0 positive. And then let's look at f of negative x. That's negative x to the fourth plus negative x cubed. And remember, there's supposed to be four zeros because it's x to the fourth. Minus 19 times negative x squared plus 11 times negative x plus 30. So this, be, this, stays, this stays positive. So that's x to the fourth. That the x, negative x cubed is negative. The negative x squared stays positive. So that be, stays as negative 19x squared. And that's going to change sign negative x and plus 30. So we have one sign change stays negative, 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 positive. So this is 2. So it's 2 or 0 negatives. So that's not really going to help me much un except for the fact that when I'm checking them, once I have two positives, I can move on to just checking the negatives. So we're going to check using our synthetic substitution, starting with 1. I mean, that's the easiest one to do. So remember, with synthetic substitution, my 0, positive 1, goes up here. And I write down my coefficients. 1, 1, negative 19, 11, and 30. Remembering to represent any missing terms with a 0. And I bring it down. 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and I add, 1 plus 1 is 2, and I multiply 2 times 1 is 2, and I add, negative 19 plus 2 is negative 17, and I multiply, negative 17, and I add, negative 6, and I multiply, negative 6, and I add, I get 24, so this is not a 0. Let's try another one. Let's try two. We're going to look for the positive ones, and then we'll look for the negative ones. So I get 1, 1, negative 19, 11, and 30. So a lot of just guessing and doing the work till you find the zeros. Bring down the 1, multiply to get 2. Add to get 3, multiply to get 6. Add to get negative 13. Multiply to get negative 26. 
add to get negative 15 and multiply to get negative 30. I get zero. So that means two is one of my zeros. Awesome. Now here's the cool thing. Now that I have reduced it, I can use these numbers now and check the rest of them because if it's a factor of the largest polynomial, it'll be factors of the factors. So I can move on and if I look at these new numbers, the negative 15 may, helps us to eliminate some of these possibilities so I don't have to try as many. 15 only has 5, 3, 15, and 1, so I don't have to try another 2. I can eliminate uh, 3 stays, 5 stays, 6 doesn't, 10 doesn't, and 30. So I know those are no longer possibilities because they don't go into the 15. So that's a cool thing. Um, so now let's try three. I'm just trying positives. Once I have two positives, I can go to the negatives. Once I get it to a quadratic to where there's three terms, then I can factor or use quadratic formula. Uh, this one I can't factor by grouping here. It would be nice if I could, but I can't factor this one by grouping. So let's write down my new coefficients. So we're going to use these now. One, three, negative 13, and negative 15. And I bring down the 1, multiply to get 3, add to get 6, multiply to get 18, add to get 5, multiply to get 15, and I get 0. So I found another one. Now what's left is my constant, my x and my x squared. I have x squared plus 6x plus 5, and I can factor that. What two numbers multiply to 5 and add to 6? x plus 5 and x plus 1, and then I set those equal to 0, so my x's are negative 5, negative 1, there's the two negatives, uh, 3 worked, and 2 worked, and those are my final answers.